the Pistons just finished their season opener with a loss, a close one, though, to Chicago Bulls. We'll talk about what happened in this game, what my takeaways are from this game in this episode of the Lockdown Pistons podcast. <laughs> Are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. This episode is brought to you guys by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends over at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. And I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill NBA. Uh, you guys can also find me on YouTube, at Kuz Ballroom. But you can also find the Locked On Pistons YouTube channel, which I hope you're watching this on. Or if not, if you're listening on the podcast, go check it out, our YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. And we're recording this right after the Pistons lost to the Chicago Bulls, 94-88. It was a close game throughout. Uh, the Pistons actually had the lead for the majority of this game. Uh, it, I, I wouldn't call it a pretty game by any means. It definitely was a very score, low-scoring game. Both teams struggled offensively. Uh, but we're going to talk about this game. We'll start off with some positives, some positive takeaways, because, you know, it is the first game of the season, even though the Pistons lost, and it, it was a struggle at times. There were some positives. Let's start off with a good note and be a little happier. Then we'll talk about some of the, the some of the negatives that we saw from the first game. And then lastly, in the final segment, we'll talk about Dwayne Casey's decision to close with Corey Joseph over the last quarter in, in like, what, three minutes over Killian Hayes. We'll talk about that in the final segment. But first, let's talk about some of the positives that happened in today's game or last night's game against the Chicago Bulls. Uh, but real quickly, actually, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, uh, one of my light bulbs broke, like busted right before we uh, started recording. So, like, I'm kind of doing a Phantom of the Opera thing here. Like, half my face is, like, dark. And then the other side is, like, oh, wait, no, I did the opposite way. But, yeah, one side is dark. One side is light. So, uh, I saw, I'm saw. i sorry for that for you guys watching on YouTube right now. But I'll, I'll have that fixed. Hopefully, uh, I can find this type of light bulb in a store uh, soon. Anyways, let's talk about some of the positives from tonight's game. So, the Pistons, like I said, they lost 94 to 88. It was a tough game. But there were plenty of, of nice things, I guess, you could take away from. The first thing I want to say is, Hamadou Diallo's defense on DeMar DeRozan was excellent. Uh, he had one possession where uh, DeMar DeRozan was isolating him at the top of the key. DeMar DeRozan hit him with a quick, cro- quick crossover to his left. It looked like that he had beat Hamadou Diallo, but Diallo made a great recovery to get back in front of him. Uh, someone, One of the uh, Bulls teammates cut down the left wing, uh, backdoored Frank Jackson. Uh, it looked like it was about to be a free layup, but at the same time of guarding DeMar DeRozan, saw, Hamadou Diallo saw that cutter coming in rotated over and made a stop on the cutter as well and forced a turnover, which led to a Trey Lyles dunk. Uh, that's just one of the plays, but that right there is probably my favorite play of the night. That was an extraordinary defensive play. Uh, but yeah, Hamdu Diallo looked excellent defensively tonight. It was great to see him play that well defensively. He looked a little bit more comfortable offensively this game. Uh, but yeah, Hamdu Diallo, he was the first one off the bench as well. That was shocking a little bit. Uh, we'll see how they decide to move forward with the starting lineup. Uh, Frank Jackson, he, he didn't have a great night. He needs I think he needs to be hunting for a shot more. He can't really do that in the starting lineup as much. Uh, even though they need his facing, he got pretty tortured on, on offense by Zach Levine. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do moving forward until K gets back, which should be. I mean, maybe next game he returns, but I'm assuming it's going to be a, probably a, a game or two down the road, maybe even three. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle that moving forward. But Hamadou Diallo, I thought he had a good opening night, especially off of how he played in the preseason. Uh, next one. I know you guys are waiting for me to hear this, or waiting for me to say this, I should say. Uh, all you guys who listened to the podcast throughout the summer and followed me on Twitter, you guys know that I was extremely critical of Sadiq Bey's uh, ceiling, and I was critical of how he played in the summer league and what they were focusing on in the summer league. I will come out on – first of all, everyone needs to understand that we all are rooting for the same team. Like, I, I, I want the Pistons to win. I want them to be good, okay? So I'm okay with being wrong. So if I, if I am wrong, I'll come out here and say I was wrong. So far through one game in the preseason, it looks like I was wrong. Sadiq Bey – Looks looks much improved. His decision making. I was in the post game media session. Dwayne Casey mentioned mentioned uh, Sadiq Bay's decision making. God, can I speak tonight? Decision making multiple times in the in the pre game and the post game session. And I'll tell you what. Watching the game, he was making some passes that I didn't think he would ever have the chance of making. He didn't show any of that in his rookie season. He made really good decisions with the ball. Uh, him and Isaiah Stewart have the synergy going on. The pick and roll is really nice to see. And also, there's a few isolation attempts that ended pretty well for him. 
Uh, he also had that one spinning layup that was incredible footwork to see. Uh, but yeah, overall, this was a, if you want to take the biggest positive from tonight, it was probably Sadiq Bey's offensive game, uh, his decision making, his growth there that you saw in this first game. Now, again, it's just the first game of the season. It's not too crazy to get over again. But so far, I, I'll say it through preseason, the first game, Sadiq Bey looks like he's proven me wrong and he looks like he's improved in all those areas. I didn't think he would have really the, the ceiling to improve on. So, you know, I, happy to see it. Sadiq had a really good game, I think, tonight. Uh, he did shoot 6 of 14 from the field. Uh, it wasn't that great of efficiently of a night, uh, but the, the things that he showed along the, the entire journey of the game definitely were some things to be happy about. Uh, he missed a couple open threes, but he'll make his threes. The other stuff that you saw definitely were some major things to see from him. Uh, also, Jeremy Grant before the fourth quarter, which we'll talk about in the next segment, but before the fourth quarter, I thought Jeremy Grant looked excellent as well. Uh, he played really well. He looked like he was pretty good on defense as well. He was consistently active on defense, but then offensively, he was really just making the right plays, attacking the rim. I still don't like that he settles for these long twos every now and then. Uh, he's not very good at those. Uh, but when he's attacking the rim and getting free throws, which he was doing before the fourth quarter, uh, he was he looked pretty good. Um, outside of that, Trey Lyles continues to be decent. I thought he was going to be awful. I didn't think he was that good, but he's been decent for the Pistons in the preseason. Uh, and in this first regular season game, he was actually pretty decent. Um, but outside of that, um, yeah, I think the I think the positives might end there. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the game, they pit the Pistons overall. I guess you could say this was a positive. Uh, you can either credit this to Chicago just being trash offensively in the first game, or you could say the Pistons really played good defense in the first game. I mean, you held the Chicago Bulls to 94 points. I mean, this is not 2005, 2006. This is 2021. And holding a team to 94 points through three quarters is sometimes a success. Uh, so doing it throughout the entire game was definitely a success, whether you want to point to Chicago's uh, lack of hitting open shots or if you want to say it was Detroit's really good defense. Either way, the Pistons did a good job holding them to that, uh, that, that point total. And, again, like I said, Hamadou Diallo's defense of DeMar DeRozan was exceptional. I really would have liked to see Hamadou Diallo check Zach Levine down the stretch of the game. Um, but, yeah, outside, oh, and I, also Isaiah Stewart did an incredible job uh, Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic was uh, frustrated all night. He did not want to bang with Isaiah Stewart all night. Isaiah Stewart is another positive. I talked about how he struggled a little bit throughout the preseason adapting to or getting the knocking the rust off, I should say, because of the ankle injury that he dealt with in the summer that kept him out from playing all summer. Uh, he had a really good game tonight. Uh, and like I said, defensively, he was he was really giving Vucevic fits. Like Vucevic is a really talented scorer, one of the best scoring centers, talented centers, offensively talented, I should say centers in the league, and he really did not like messing with uh, – he did not like banging with Isaiah Stewart. He was really frustrating him. So that was – those are some positives from tonight's game or last night's game. Uh, like I said, it, it definitely wasn't a pretty game. It was an ugly game, but an ugly game that the Pistons kept close and they were leading throughout the majority of the game. Uh, but once it got close to the end, uh, Zach Levine really took over uh, and showed that he's the closer out there and he was the best player on the floor. Uh, so it is what it is. Sometimes it happens like that. And – what you really wanted to see from the Pistons was just to stay close, play hard all night, and force force the Bulls to take tough shots, which they did all three of those things. So I think everyone can be happy with the Pistons' effort uh, to, in last night's loss, even though you know you probably would like to see a little bit of a win. Maybe some of us were looking for a win in the opening night. Uh, it was a good game by the Pistons. They 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 showed a lot of fight, uh, played really hard. So I think that's all you can ask for this team, a majority of this year, honestly. So when we come back, we'll talk about some of the negatives, which is why I really want to get into. Uh, I was searching a little bit for some positives, to be honest. Uh, but we're going to talk about some of the negatives. From the Pistons opening night, lost to the Chicago Bulls, losing 94-88. to 88. But before we get into any of that, let me tell you about one of our sponsors, our new sponsor. And I know everyone here try, has this all the time, uh, McDonald's. This episode of Locked on Pistons is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect a place where classmates can meet up for a study group, knowing they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of French fries and McFlurries. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, and the home team or their away team can come to recharge. It's a place you always look forward to stopping at on a long road trip to rest your legs and refuel. I know I can myself speak to that last point. Me and my fiance Megan, we went on a road trip to Chicago about a week and a half ago. It was really fun, but to start off our road trip, we needed that breakfast, sauces, egg, and cheese McMuffin before we really set out on the road because we were going to be out there for a while. We need to get charged up with some breakfast. 
you know, and what's a better option than the sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin? It's easily my favorite thing at McDonald's, and it gets my day started. We were wide awake and feeling good the entire ride to Chicago, all because we had that sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin at McDonald's. I'm telling you. So go ahead to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect. Did somebody say Lockdown Pistons, a watch party? I think that would be pretty fun at McDonald's. I'll be there if you guys want to try to set that kind of thing up. But thank you to McDonald's for sponsoring this episode. Ba 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 ba. I'm loving it. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the negatives uh, from this Pistons loss against the Chicago Bulls. Uh, also, I know you guys liked my. Tell, tell me if you guys liked my jingle in that last uh, that last McDonald's ad read. What did I do the ba da ba ba ba? Pretty good. Did I did I do that good enough? You gotta let me know. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the negatives from the Pistons loss tonight or last night to the Chicago Bulls. So the first thing I guess I want to talk about is I, I and I think this is something that a lot of Pistons fans and a lot of people covering the Pistons just following the game are going to point out. I think it was a little bit of a discussion last year. They didn't harp on it too much because the Pistons were basically trying to lose, and it was his first year. However, the first game into the second season, I think it's already starting to be talked about a little bit more, and that was the closing, the ability to close by Jeremy Grant. And not even just Jeremy Grant, but the Pistons in general. So I think it's quite clear that I, I think already after the first game, and this is not one of those things that I'm, it's like a knee-jerk reaction after one game. Oh, it's over. Pick the, click the panic button. It's it, it's time to freak out. No, I think this was something that we saw last year and we we assumed were probably going to be the case this year. And that's why Kay Cunningham was drafted. Not only was he the best player, he's also a really good closer. And I think we all expect Kay Cunningham to be the closer for the Pistons. However, Jeremy Grant did struggle in the fourth quarter tonight. Uh, and he did struggle to, to close the game for the Pistons. It, was, it, it sucked to see. Um, I think a lot of fans, again, like I said, are pretty okay with a loss and okay with trying to go for another draft pick this year. I don't think anyone's too mad about a loss. Uh, but, the, but the way that it happened, I think definitely some fans are going to be walking away like, yeah, you know, Jeremy, he's he's a really good player. He, he looked good at the majority of the night, but definitely closing, um, he he had his he had his weaknesses. Uh, definitely the part of Alex Caruso really bothering him. Alex Caruso is a really good defender, but Jeremy has a size advantage against Alex Caruso. Maybe not – uh, weight-wise and strength-wise, even though I think Jeremy's pretty damn strong for his weight anyways. Uh, he definitely is longer and taller, obviously, than Alex Caruso. So you wouldn't expect Alex Caruso to really give him that much that much of a fit offensively, uh, maybe make it a little bit harder for him to score. But Alex Caruso really did a number on Jeremy Grant in the four, in the final quarter. Uh, I was in the, like I said, I was in the post-game media session with Dwayne Casey, and Dwayne Casey mentioned himself without even being asked about it, um, Dwayne Casey mentioned that Chicago made a good adjustment by putting Alex Caruso on Jeremy Grant late. Uh, and yeah, that really was the turning point of the game. Part of the Zach Levine really going off offensively, obviously in closing, but also on the other side of the floor, Alex Caruso did a hell of a job on Jeremy Grant closing and it really made him tough, made it tough on him to score. And the Pistons turned the ball over like four or five times in the final stretch of the game. Uh, like the final, like what, three, four minutes of the game. So it definitely was a lot of that had to do with Alex Caruso. He was all over the place in the first half. And then in the fourth quarter, he really showed himself again. So good pickup by Chicago. I think he's going to play well for Chicago. But definitely from the Pistons' point of view, you don't expect to see Jeremy Grant struggle like that as much with Alex Caruso. So imagine if he has someone else on him or someone his size, his height, et cetera. Uh, it's just – it's still a work in progress for Jeremy. I think it, there's there's a position on the Pistons right now that need – that that is vacant vac- – you know what? Let me stop trying to say that word. I don't know why I can't say it. Empty right now. And that is the spot of a closer. And I think that's the spot that the Pistons are really desperately missing from Kay Cunningham. I think that's the spot where he'll really be needed and where you're going to really see the difference that he causes for the team uh, because they, I think they do need their closer. Um, Isaiah Stewart said after the game that they know who their primary scorers are. They know who their closers are. And he said that's Jeremy Grant and Sadiq Bey. And everyone else knows their role and gets the ball to those guys. Well, Jeremy Grant was really struggling tonight, and while Sadiq was showing flashes of it, he still shot 6 of 14, and, you know, he's a second-year player who is just now taking the step forward and trying to take that step forward and ball handling a little bit more. So I think it's a little bit of a tough ask to see to ask Sadiq to try to be a closer for you. So I think the Pistons definitely have a hole that needs to be filled by Kay Cunningham. I think that's the biggest hole he'll fill. But, yeah, definitely Jeremy Grant struggled in the fourth quarter when he was guarded by Alex Caruso. Uh, the next negative, obviously, is Killian Hayes. I won't say his total game was a negative. He played solid defense when Casey credited him with his defense in the post-game media session. Uh, but he shot 0 of 6 from the field. Um, I'll say this. 
His aggressiveness definitely is is higher than last year. You saw him actively trying to score or being looking for spots, um, but he he didn't hit a shot. And you know, I'll say this: it was it's a step in the pro, a step in the right direction, of course. That he's taking, he's being trying to be more aggressive, and it's just one game. I just want to say, and also, people are going to say I'm making excuses for him. It's me being just like legit. Him him his first game of trying to be aggressive for the Pistons. Uh, he missed the preseason, so his first it was like outside of one half of the preseason. So then, you know, for his first game to be going against Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball, who were checking him all the time, those two guys were the ones checking him the entire game. It it, it definitely was going to be. It was tough. It was tough. Um, you could see that they were making life harder on him. Um, he he did hit that one step back three in the corner that they called a travel. I don't know if that's a travel. I feel like if James Harden does that, they don't call a travel. Uh, it was a nice move too, but is what it is. Overall, he shot over six from the field. I still would love to see him try to get to the free throw line. Uh, there was one fadeaway left-hand uh, floater kind of thing he did on Lonzo Ball on the left side of the floor. Uh, he actually beat Lonzo to the rim. He, like, he beat Lonzo to his spot, but there's I see. I hope this is not something that continues to happen throughout the season. I hope this is something he learns and he kind of like takes out of his game. Is this When he beats his guy to his spot, around the rim he still fades away a little bit from the rim instead of just going to the rim because if he would have just went up like under he i'm assuming he was afraid of getting blocked uh and, and that's that's what it looked like you definitely get weak side blocked there but if you just go up strong at the rim you're likely going to pick up a foul killian you're six five with a long wingspan and you're strong lonzo's not going to be able to do that without fouling you and majority of guards aren't going to be able to do it either so and he probably would have just made the layup he really did have a step on lonzo uh and he just like for no reason i feel like faded away uh, he had another one when he had a, a nice drive down the left down the left uh, left wing. He beat Lonzo to a spot, gave him a pump fake. Lonzo went flying by, and I thought he was going to step through for a simple layup, but instead he pump fake, went around him, and then took a fadeaway jumper in, in, instead. And he just made it tougher on himself. So he was being aggressive, but still, there's like there's little parts that you still he obviously needs to improve in. Um, and I'll say this again: it was the first game of the season. You have to give it a lot more time than I'm going to give it this entire season and maybe even some of the next season, but definitely the, this entire season. But you want to see him improve in those areas. Obviously, the next step is to actually hit those shots. And along with that is when shots aren't hitting, you want to see him continue to try to take those shots. So those are two spots that he has to improve on still, obviously. Um, but, yeah, first game he only played 20 minutes. Um, and we'll talk about him playing 20 minutes later on in the final segment. But, yeah, I think Achilles obviously struggled from the floor tonight. Um, it was good to see his aggressiveness. He definitely is acting more aggressive, uh, but I'd like to see him obviously make some shots, and hopefully he does that this Saturday when the Pistons get back on the floor. Uh, we'll see what happens. It was the first game of the season. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully he continues to be aggressive and he you know, hits some shots. Uh, he didn't even get a three up, by the way. That was crazy. I, I don't like how he didn't even get a three up. I wanted to see him take some threes, but either way, Killian, was, he needs to hit a shot. He, he can't go over like that. He has to hit some shots, so uh that's another negative and then the final negative i'll say before we get to this third segment uh, there's a lot more a lot of other negatives as well you can just sum up shooting and shot making all in the one big negative that the pistons as a team just sucked at uh last night uh but you want me to talk specifically a player um josh jackson was a mixed bag tonight early on i clipped a few clips on twitter and and t- talked about it he looked like he was playing calm still like the calmness that i talked about from the preseason he was he he had a nice drive when he hesitated. He w- took what the defense gave him, played at his own pace, and got himself a wide open layup. It was a really nice drive. Um, but then I feel like towards the second half, and I, I I feel like what I saw happen was Chicago Bulls started pressuring him a little bit more. And once he started getting pressured, he started to be he he started to go back to old habits. And I really think another thing, and again, this dude was all over the place. Alex Caruso was giving the Pistons hell all night, all the Pistons players. And when Alex Caruso started getting up in Josh Jackson, you saw him start to revert back to his habits, and he started making some bad decisions again. He had, like, I believe, back-to-back turnovers there in the third quarter. Um, but it definitely it was a mixed bag. At the beginning of the game, I would say his decision-making was pretty good, and he was having a really good game. He instantly came into the game, and you felt his, you felt his impact on defense and offense. He quickly scored five points on offense and then had a few good defensive stops. He even had some good defensive plays at the end of the game. He had a chase-down block again. He was obviously good on defense the majority of the game, but I think the first half and the second half were the tail two halves with Josh Jackson with this decision making because once once the team started getting up in him and pressuring him, he started reverting back to old habits, and that's usually how it goes when you, when you start pressuring guys and making guys uncomfortable. 
they start to revert back to old ways because, you know, that's just how it goes. So I'd like to see him continue to try to work on that throughout the season um, and continue to show the calmness and, and the decision making that he was showing in the first half. So hopefully he improves on that. He continues to be that way. Um, and, and you know, he, he improves from what was the second half in the second game of the season and throughout the season. So, but yeah, that definitely was a little bit of a negative to see because I, I, that was one of the things I mentioned to you guys. I wanted to see him continue to be good with the ball in his hands. And it was a tale of two halves. Once they started pressuring him, he really started to uh, have questionable decision making. But when we come back, we'll talk about Dwayne Casey's decision to close with Corey Joseph for the entirety of of the fourth quarter over Killian Hayes. Was that the right move? Do I agree with it? We'll talk about that when we come back. Uh, but first, let me tell you about another one of our newer sponsors, Calm. Do you want to know what makes LeBron James King James? Sleep. That's right. Sleep is his superpower. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation and has teamed up with LeBron James to help you activate the power of sleep. LeBron and Calm know that your mind is like any other muscle in your body, but you don't have to be a world champion to learn how to train. Calm can help you train your brain so you sleep better, reduce your stress, and perform at your best, just like King James. For LeBron, sleep is a critical part of his mental fitness routine. And as he says, quote, getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things I can do for my body and my mind. From the sound of rain falling on leaves at bedtime, sleep stories, Calm puts me to sleep within minutes, which means I wake up ready for any challenge. So if you head to calm.com slash lockdown NBA for a limited time, you'll get 50, 40% off a Calm premium subscription. With Calm, you have access to the nature scenes LeBron James loves, like rain and leaves, and so much more, like sleep stories and meditation so you can be ready for any challenges life throws your way. Again, for a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron using Calm and get 40% discount on a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash locked on MBA. Unlock content to help keep you focused, ease stress, and sleep better. Get started at calm.com locked on MBA. That's Calm dot com slash locked on NBA. Then let me tell you about another one of our sponsors, Sweat Block. There are some things in life that you just don't really want to talk about. You know, issues in a relationship, family problems, or more importantly, sweating through your shirt when you're out with the boys in public. I know I've been there. I know you guys have been there. Everyone's been there. It's an issue for everybody. But Sweat Block or NT Perspirant Wipes can help you. Sweat Block is doctor re- created and doctor, re- doctor recommended. If you haven't tried Sweat Block yet and you don't trust me, listen to some of our loyal listeners who have tried the pro- uh, the product. Here's This one is from a Hollywood producer. We have a producer who was working on the set of Marvel movie. Maybe you've heard of it. She was working 18-hour days for weeks in Atlanta heat. She heard about Sweat Block, started trying it, and loves it. No more sweaty production days. She even reports that one of the A-list actors to use it, maybe the green one, to stay dry on set and on the red carpet. So make sure you go try Sweat Block. Sweat Block works up for seven days per use and has a dry shirt guarantee. You simply apply it before bedtime, go to sleep, and then wake up the next morning and do everything in your normal routine. If Sweat Block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back. If you or someone you know is dealing with the worst issue in life of sweating through their t-shirt in public, tell them about Sweat Block. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on or at Amazon and CVS. Get Sweat Block now and stop sweating. So let's talk about Killian Hayes and Corey Joseph and the decision to go with Corey Joseph in that fourth quarter by Dwayne Casey. So let me just come out, come right out and say it to you guys. Killian Hayes did not perform well offensively. He was missing shots. He wasn't able to make any shots. Obviously, he wasn't having a great game. I'm not sitting here saying he was having a great game. Um, And also, we have questioned Dwayne Casey on this before, and he's turned out to be right sometimes. He's been wrong sometimes, but he's turned out to be right a lot of the time. So I'm not saying... This is a big deal. He called it not a big deal after the game. And I'm not saying that I'm going to sit here and critique him so hardly about it or so harshly about it. Um, but because he may be right. Maybe he was doing this to save Killian from having to go against Lonzo and Caruso defensively uh, the rest of the night because he saw that he was struggling against them mightily and he didn't want to throw him into the fire game. Maybe he wanted to do that. That's one of the suggestions you guys tweeted at me. And I think that maybe could have been the case. Also, But one of the things I, I, I think that you – Dwayne Casey needs to be like hesitant to do and, and needs to be mindful of. And maybe again, maybe he, he obviously he knows more than me. Maybe this was the right decision, but I am worried a little bit about the fact that, you know, you're encouraging killing Hayes to be aggressive. All train camp, you're encouraging him to go get your shot. Continue to try to be aggressive. Even if you're missing, shoot the ball, shoot the ball, be aggressive, try to make plays. Even when you're missing, keep doing it. And all his teammates were saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, all training camp and all off season. They were saying this to us. 
there's something that worries me and concerns me about when you're preaching that message to a young player. He goes out there and he does that. He's having a bad night. You, you're tell, you, we've been told that you guys were telling him to continue to be aggressive even when he's missing. He's doing that. He's missing. And then he gets I – I guess I shouldn't say benched because Dwayne Keaton didn't say he got benched. He just said he thought Corey Joseph was a better option at that point. So I won't use the word benched. But I think I think it does something. It can hurt a player's confidence when you tell him to be aggressive, be aggressive, shoot when you're missing, continue to shoot even if you're missing and struggling. And then you sit him when he's not playing well in the very first game. Not when I'm talking about like weeks down the line, months down the line. The very first game after you telling him this, he's struggling scoring the ball. He hasn't made a shot, and you sit him for the entirety of the fourth quarter. Um, I think that can it, it's a it's a careful thing that you have to you have to toe the line there. You, I understand that if you don't want to reward a guy if he's playing poorly. You don't want to reward a guy if he's playing bad. I get it. But you also don't want to crush the dude's confidence off the bat in the season when he's trying to do what what the team has asked of him, what everyone wants to see from him, which is be aggressive. I think all of us listening to this, everyone who is watching the Pistons, we want to see Killian Hayes be aggressive and continue to try to search for a shot. We want him to be as aggressive as possible. If he's missing, he's missing. And eventually, if he's not able to ever make those shots, then we know that he's not going to be able to be that good of a player. But as of right now, we want him to be as aggressive as possible, looking for his shots, and, and not be scared by the fact that he may miss this next one or miss the last one, so I'm not going to take this next one. We don't want him to be like that. I don't think anyone does. So I, I just think it's a careful thing that you have to do when you tell him, like I said, when you tell him to be that way, and then the very first game he's struggling hit a shot, he doesn't play the entire fourth quarter. Uh, Dwayne Casey also, I know some of you guys thought that maybe it had something to do with the hit to the head that he sustained in the second quarter. I know some of you guys tweeted at me and said there was another – collision that he was a part of in the third quarter I don't remember the third quarter one but if that happened either way Dwayne Casey said after the game he's not hurt he doesn't believe that he's dealing with anything and that was not it didn't have anything to do with why he sat him in the fourth quarter so it doesn't appear to be that Killian is hurt as all hurt at all or that has anything to do with Dwayne Casey's decision we are going to see Killian on Saturday so you guys it's good to hear that you guys don't have to worry about that but still like I said um, it, it, I understand not wanting to reward guys if they're playing badly. I, I get it. I get it. I just, again, like I said, I think it's just a, to- a line that you have to toe really carefully because you don't want to shatter the dude's confidence already one game into the season. So I think it's going to be something to look forward to in the next game. Casey also said to us in, in the post game media session that, you know, he probably should have got killing back into the game at some point in the fourth quarter, but he liked what Corey Joseph was giving him and he doesn't think quote unquote, it's a big deal. So I, I don't think it was like some message that he was sending to Killian Hayes. Maybe he did inadvertently. Maybe it hurts his confidence. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it was something that Dwayne Casey did, like to send a message to Killian or something about, hey, stop shooting or whatever. Um, I, 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 I question the Corey Joseph was giving you something good. I question it. I don't think Corey Joseph was having a good game at all. I think he was being just as bothered by Lonzo and the other Bulls guards. I think he also was getting tore up on defense, something that Killian wasn't. Uh, but Corey Joseph was getting tore up on defense as well. So it says, I, I question the logic for doing it as well. But Dwayne Casey is the head coach. Uh, he he knows more than me. So, I mean, I guess that's what people say, right? You know more you know more basketball. Or, no, you forgot more basketball than I'll ever know. Um, I, I usually don't agree with those type of statements. But either way, he's the head coach. Maybe this is the right move. It's just the first game, like you said. It really isn't that big of a deal if it as long as it doesn't shatter – Killing Hayes' confidence this quick into the season. Um, but, yeah, again, uh, it definitely is going to be something to watch moving forward. I would rather Killing Hayes close. If it gives you a worse chance at winning right now over Corey Joseph, I don't really care. I don't think fans should care either because the Pistons are in the season of development. They're trying to develop young guys. They're not in the process of trying to win 50 games, 40 games, 45 games. That's not what their goal is. Their goal is to develop guys, and that's the only way you're going to be able to develop Killing Hayes and the only way you're going to make – help him get better in crunch time is by giving him those kind of minutes and letting him try fight through it and learn from it. So that's where I stand on it. Uh, it's just one game. It's nothing to get too big worked up about, but yeah, just wanted to share my thoughts on that. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys though, for making lockdown Pistons your first listen of today. I really appreciate it. We are free and available on all platforms. So, and also make sure you go check us out on YouTube. If you aren't already, uh, if you watched today's episode, again, like I said, we have a little fam of the opera thing going on right now where Half my face is dark and half my face is, is light because one of my light bulbs broke uh, behind the camera. I apologize about that. I'll fix it and get a new light bulb as soon as I possibly can. Uh, but outside of that, again, make sure you go check out Locked on Fancy Basketball for your second listen of today. I, I just did a fantasy draft 
uh, fancy basketball draft yesterday, and I used a lot of the advice that Josh Floyd, the host of Lockdown Fantasy Basketball, was giving to his listeners in my picks. So if you haven't drafted yet or you just want advice moving forward for the rest of your fantasy basketball season, definitely make sure you continue to tune in to Lockdown Fantasy Basketball with Josh Floyd. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. It was a good fight by the Pistons. It They, they led for the majority of the game. I hope you guys are happy with their effort. Uh, hopefully they make some more shots Saturday. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I think I would rather have had the Pistons lose by like 20 points, have it be like 100 to 120. Like I would rather have watched that game. I'm not going to lie. That This past game, you know, they fought. It was nice to see, but, you know, it definitely was. It, w- it wasn't the best game to watch from an entertainment perspective. I, I, I'll tell you that much. But thank you guys for listening to today's podcast. I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's podcast. And we won't have a podcast for Saturday, obviously. We don't ever have podcasts on the weekend. So tomorrow will be the last podcast you guys hear before the game on Saturday. I hope you guys enjoy it. Have fun with it. Maybe at the slight chance we might see Kay Cunningham. I doubt it, but the slight chance. Uh, we'll see what happens. But until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace out, everybody.